Today's Namaste Yoga is about Hanuman the musician and how he teaches us to release our egos. Hello and welcome to episode 220 of Namaste Yoga. Thank you so much for joining us. Today we're continuing our Hanuman series and we'll be learning about Hanuman the musician and how he teaches us to release our egos. So thank you so much to Dusky Leaf for all my props. You're going to need a lot of them today. We're going to be starting resting over your blocks. So you're going to need two blocks set up like this. And if you don't have blocks, you can always roll up some blankets or a sleeping bag or some towels to start. You're going to need a blanket as well. You're going to need a bolster if you have one. Again, if you don't have one, you could use a uh, blanket or towels or sleeping bag rolled up. And you're going to need a chair for today's practice. Thank you to Squeeze Yoga Clothing for my clothes. Today I'm wearing a long-sleeved bamboo top that says yoga makes everything better and um, gray leggings and I'm layering it with a bamboo cap sleeve top and also I want to start with a testimonial. I have a testimonial from Atinya Jansa from the Netherlands. Hello Melissa, my name is Atina Jansen from the Netherlands. I always watch your videos and your lessons and I'm using them to give my own lessons. I very much enjoy them. It's just my yoga and I hope you uh, will continue for a long time. Thank you very much. Bye bye from the Netherlands. Thank you, Atinya, for your testimonial. And you can leave a testimonial too on my website with, through SpeakPipe. You just go to melissawest.com. And thank you so much for leaving your comments on melissawest.com, on iTunes, and on YouTube. And thanks so much to everybody who did leave your comments on iTunes. We have sent off the prizes to the winners of our iTunes contest. We sent off yoga bags from Dusky Leaf to... Janet from Iowa and Pamela from Quebec. So those are on their way to them. All right, we're gonna get started with our class today. So you're going to start lying over top of your blocks and you'll wanna set them up like this. So this one's going to support your head and this one's going to support your back. And this one's gonna go just about the base of your rib cage. And you're just going to rest over them like this with your palms turned up. And you know, if it feels too, one of the complaints I hear about this is that it's too hard on their back. You could always take your blanket and put it over top of your blocks as well. If you have um, the cork blocks like me, then I know the foam blocks are softer but you could always just put the blanket over top of the cork blocks or if you have wooden blocks as well, they can be kind of harsh. <laughs> so the blanket would be fine too. So you're gonna rest like that to receive the teachings as we begin today. A lesser known fact about Hanuman is that he is considered to be a great musician. Hanuman was blessed by Saraswati, the goddess of music and arts, 
and as a result was able to play the lute and sing lyrics in praise of Ram. Hanuman sang bhagans, songs of adoration, and kirtans in uh, songs of praise. Hanuman sang and, as an act of devotion to his beloved Ram, and it was said that his music was so powerful that it could even melt rocks. The Shiv Puran identifies Hanuman as the founder of classical music. And so Hanuman can be considered a patron saint of musicians as well. And musicians can pray to Hanuman to help master their craft. One day, two celestial saints, Narad and Dhumbru, came to Krishna and asked which one of them he considered to be the best musician. Krishna had observed these sages become full of pride and felt it was a great time to teach them a lesson. Krishna asked the sages to go to the mountains and listen to Hanuman. The two agreed, thinking that Hanuman would be no match for them, and went to the Himalayas to listen to Hanuman sing. They climbed to the height of the icy peaks and asked Hanuman to chant for them. Hanuman modestly replied that he only wanted to sing the praises of Ram. The sages urged Hanuman to sing, and so he picked up his lute and began. Narad and Tumbru were enraptured by Hanuman's voice. His music was so powerful that it melted the snow. Hey, we need him here right now. <laughs> In Canada, we just had a huge snowstorm yesterday. It's the middle of March. We got a foot of snow. <laughs> That's what we need, Hanuman. <sighs> so back to our story. <laughs> so what happened was Hanuman was singing, and it was so powerful that he melted the snow. But when Hanuman stopped singing, the snow turned to ice. The unfortunate thing about Hanuman stopping is that Narad and Tumbru were now frozen and cemented in the ice. They begged Hanuman to start singing again so that they could be released. This is what we need. We totally need Hanuman to release us from winter. <laughs> so Hanuman asked them, why don't you start singing so that the snow will melt and you can free yourselves? No matter how hard they tried, their voices could not melt the snow. Narad and Humru realized that their singing voices were filled with ego, whereas Hanuman sang out of pure devotion. So how does this relate to our yoga practice and our day-to-day -day lives? As far as how it relates to our day-to-day -day life, I'm reminded of the teachings of the Bhagavad Gita. The practice of karm yoga calls for selfless action in the world, meaning you do your work to the best of your ability and you release it to the world and you let go of application as to how it will be received by others. And this is from chapter four, verse 21 of the Bhagavad Gita. So we can practice this each and every day on our yoga mats. As Judith Lasseter says, yoga is not about touching your toes. It's about what you learn on the way down. In other words, yoga is a practice, not a performance. Or sometimes it gets said this way, yoga is a practice, not a perfect. One of the best ways to turn off the egoic need to strive or achieve in yoga is to close your eyes. In yoga, we call the withdrawal of, sentence, of our senses pratyahar. By closing off the outside world, you will be able to tune into what's happening with your body, your thoughts, your emotions, your breath, and your spirit. Another thing to ask yourself is if you're experiencing ease and steadiness in your poses. Chapter 2, verse 46 of the Yoga Sutras, Pachanjali says that the yoga posture or asana for yoga should be steady, stable, and motionless as well as comfortable. So by achieving balance between steadiness and comfort, you will find harmony in your practice. So go ahead and reflect on how these teachings um, create meaning for you in your life and in your yoga practice and 
also reflect on what it is you're trying to create in your own life right now as a result of your yoga practice and form an intention for what you would like to receive from these teachings today. Okay, so to come off the blocks, you're going to bend your knees and carefully roll to your side and just place your blocks off to your side. And then you're gonna lie back down on your back. And so as we practice today, we're going to become aware of all the ways that striving show up in our practice. And all the, so that's kind of the way that ego shows up, you know, the way, that, the way we want to try and be the best. And that can show up in trying to create shapes. And so I've chosen some shapes in our practice, uh, particularly back bends, because, you know, it's like we want to create that shape of the back bend that we have this idea in our head of how it should be versus listening to our body, especially about having ease and steadiness and allowing our body to unwind. So that's the intention with the class today. So go ahead and draw your knees into your chest. So um, if you have any knee issues, you're gonna hold on behind your knees and with knees to chest, let your shoulders be heavy and just roll your head from side to side. Release your neck. And feel how that rotation of your cervical spine can start to work its way down to your thoracic spine, where your spine is connected to your rib cage. Your cervical spine being your neck. And then leaving your knees into your chest as a counterpose to that backbending fish pose that you just did. Draw your left arm across your body just to do a little shoulder stretch counterpose there. And then other shoulder, draw it across your body. And then release your arms and your legs. And you're going to roll over onto your stomach. Okay, so on your stomach, we're going to begin with some back bending. So here, I'm going to really pay attention to your body because this is the very beginning of the class and you're going to pay attention to what shapes your body wants to take, feeling that ease and steadiness, that um, comfort and the, the balance between comfort and effort knowing that this is some of the first postures you're doing in your practice. So what you're going to do is bend your right leg in, press the front of your pelvis into the ground, reach around and hold on to your right ankle. If you can reach, if not, you can hold on to your foot or you can get a strap and hook up your strap here. You're going to inhale here. Exhale, you're gonna pull your right heel away from your buttocks and pay attention to your body to see how much lift wants to happen here. And even bend your left elbow, press your left forearm into the ground to create some support 
for your little warm up back bend here. Closing your eyes, feeling the movement of your breath in your body. Feeling your breath move your body. And then slowly lowering down on this side. Releasing your leg and extending your right arm out, pressing the front of your pelvis into the ground again, bending your left leg in, reaching around, and holding on to your left ankle. Inhale here. Exhale, draw your left leg away, your left ankle away from your pelvis, listening to your body to see how much lift your thoracic spine wants at this time. Pressing your right forearm into the ground to support your mini warm-up back bend. So Tim just told me you can see my heater. That's part of creating ease in my postures this morning because it's really cold here today. Do you know how cold it is right now? It's minus 29 Celsius, and I told him I would not film this class unless I had the heater. <laughs> I knew my body wasn't going to bend at all unless I had more heat. We actually have to turn the heat off in the house when we film because it's just too loud. You would hear really weird background noise if we had the heater going, <laughs> the furnace going, because it just blows loud air. So now you get to see this radiant heater. But you have your eyes closed like good yogis anyway, focusing on your own practice. Okay, go ahead and release this side from your body. And just wiggle your hips from side to side. Then from here, we're going to come up onto all fours. We're going to come back down in a second, but we're going to come up onto all fours with your hands underneath your shoulders, your knees underneath your hips. And just to move your spine, you're going to exhale round up through your back and inhale and arch through your back for cat pose. Breathe out round. Breathe in, arch. Breathe out round. Breathe in, arch. Breathe out, round. Breathe in, arch. Breathe out, round. Breathe in, arch. And one more. Breathe out, round. And breathe in, arch. And then come back down onto your belly. And here again, you're gonna bend your right leg in. And again, you can use your strap if you need to. You're gonna reach around and hold on to your right ankle if you can reach. If not, you hold on to your foot. You're gonna reach your left hand around and hold on as well. Roll your shoulders back and up, inhale here. Exhale, listen to your body as you pull your ankle away and let it lift your, body, your chest off the ground. And then slowly lower down. 
and wiggle your hips from side to side. Then you're going to bend your left leg in, reach around and hold on to your left ankle with both arms. Lift your shoulders back and up. And again, listening to your own body, you're going to start to slowly pull your left ankle away. Let it lift your chest up off the ground and let your body tell you when it's come to the right edge for you today. Relax your jaw, space between your teeth. And then slowly lower down. Release this posture from your body and you're gonna come back up onto all fours again. Okay, so from all fours, we're going to do thread the needle as a counter pose to those back bends you just did. So you're gonna inhale, open your right arm out to the side. Exhale, take your right arm between your left wrist to your left knee. Lower your right shoulder to the ground. Lower the right side of your head to the ground. Oh, and just feel that delicious release for your spine. And then inhale back up, and we'll do that on the other side. Inhale, reach your left arm up. Exhale, thread your left hand between your right wrist, your right knee, lower your left shoulder to the ground, tuck your left chin in. Inhale, come back up to the center. You're gonna continue with your cat poses for a little side bend here. Just walk your hands to the left side of your body and you're going to exhale, round up to your back. In, inhale and arch through your back. And then go to the other side. So you're walking to your right side. And same thing. Breathe up round and breathe in arch. Okay, from here we're going to go back to those back bends and we're going to do them from kneeling here. So you can always come on to fists if your wrists are bothering you. You could even roll up your mat a bit so that you've got some elevation for your wrists so that it's, it takes the pressure off your wrists. So do what works best for you. You're going to take your left leg back and lift your left leg up. 
reach around and hold on to your right ankle inhale here and exhale open up So check in and see if you have ease and steadiness, a balance between comfort and effort in your pose. And then you can release the side down and we'll take a little break in child's pose here. And then inhale, come back up. And this time you'll take your right leg to the back of your mat, lift your right leg, bend your right leg up, reach around and hold onto your right ankle with your left hand. And then lift and open up to what feels right for your body today. Okay, so now we're going to try a pose. Actually, you're just gonna sit back and uh, circle your wrists. We're gonna try a pose called, you know what, actually we're gonna come back to it to give your wrists a little break. We're gonna do um, lunge pose and you may need your blocks for this. So, and you might even want to use some extra padding for underneath your knees. So you, since we've got our blankets here for our practice today, you can put some padding underneath your knees. You're going to walk your left leg through. Lean forward. So you've got your hands on either side of your left foot. And then you're going to sink down through your left foot and come upright. And inhale, reach up. And we're going to do the back bending lunge pose. So you can have your block uh, by your right foot, or you might even not need your block. You're going to inhale, reach your right arm up and over. And then bring your left arm up. So here, you need to really pay attention to what feels right in your body today. So it's more of a square lunge. See what feels good for the opening in the front of your hip and what feels good for your back bend and what feels good for your neck, okay? So inhale, reach your right arm up and over. Place it on your block or your ankle and you're going to reach up and over. You can whoops find a way out of the posture. <laughs> that doesn't usually happen with these blocks. They're usually pretty stable. <laughs> and we're gonna switch sides. So you might want to take your block and place it up beside your your left ankle. And walk your right leg through. Take your hands on either side of your right foot. Sink down into your front right foot. So you can come upright into your lunge, feel the opening in the front of your left hip, tuck your tailbone under, you're gonna inhale, reach up. <sighs> reach up and over to your block. And you'll probably have to bring your right foot back so you've got more of a square lunge with this. And then you're gonna reach up and over 
to whatever feels good today. Remember, this is a practice, not a performance, not a perfect. We're going to really remember that when we come back and do this next one now. So you can just put your blanket off to the side. This one's called flying cat pose. <laughs> so you're going to come onto all fours. And this is going to be a balance challenge. We're just going to have fun with it, okay? We're not going to take ourselves too seriously. We're going to let go of our ego need to be perfect. Um, I would recommend that you create some kind of a stable base by kind of making a little bit of a tripod here by having your knee in and your hand out a little bit. Take your left leg back. You're going to open up through your... Hold on to your ankle with your left hand, and then you're going to open up here. It's like half moon balancing from your, no, it's over the moon from your, from your kneeling position. So it's called flying cat. So you're going to open up from here. Okay, so then we'll try that on the other side and we'll create that little tripod for ourselves. So that's the trick, right? You have your left hand a little bit out, your, your left knee in, and then you're going to bend your right knee, reach around and hold on to your right ankle with your right hand. And then you're going to open that right knee up behind you. So you come into that flying cat. So do you have that balance between ease and effort, between ease and steadiness? And then we're going to make our way up to standing. Spread your fingers nice and wide. Tuck your toes under. Big breath in. Exhale. Lift your hips. Okay, from Adho Mukhsunasan, we're going to make our way up to standing. Look forward at your hands and walk your feet in. And then roll up to standing. And then from standing, we're going to do Virabhadrasan 1. So stand, take a step back with your left foot. Keep your hips facing front. And it doesn't have to be a big step back. More important is what's going to happen with our arms here. So you're going to inhale, reach your arms straight up, and then exhale them down around the sides. So inhale straight in front. Exhale down around the sides. Inhale straight up. Exhale down and around. Inhale straight up. Exhale down and around. And one more. Inhale straight up. Exhale down and around, and then you're going to interlace your fingers behind you for chest opening arms. And check in. Um, do I have ease and steadiness in my 
posture and so I could feel my shoulders becoming earrings. So no, that was not true for me. <laughs> so I'm going to readjust and see if I can have those chest opening arms without shoulders that have become part of my ears. Less effort in the pose. And then release that out of your body. Find a way out of the posture. Come back up to the front of your mat. And this time you'll take a step back with your right foot. Turn your hips to the front of your mat. Sink down through your front left sit bone. And you're going to inhale, reach straight up. Exhale down and around. Inhale up. Exhale down and around. Inhale up. Exhale down and around. One more. Exhale, let your shoulders drop down your back. And take your arms around behind you. And see if you can move into this posture with ease. The chest opening arms. Let your chest open. And release this from your body. Okay, we're going to do a supported inversion now. So for this, you're going to need your bolster. And you're going to put it on your mat here. And you're going to put your blocks um, at the base of your bolster. So it's a bit of setting up your props, but it's going to be worth it. And your blanket, probably like that. And what you're going to do, this is a great way to do shoulder stand. If you're menstruating, you're going to lie down on your bolster. And your shoulders are going, your shoulders and head are going to be off the bolster. And your palms are going to be out to the side. And then your feet are going to be supported by the blocks. This is also a great way to release your shoulder girdle too. So we're going to stay here for a few breaths, but just because of the time constraints I have with a yoga show, um, we, we're not going to stay here for as long as I would like. If you want to, you can press pause on this video and stay here probably for 10 minutes would be fine. So. You're in control of how long you want to stay in this pose, and that's the beauty of video, the pause button. And as far as how this pose relates to our class theme today, this version of shoulder stand is just as valuable as the one with the legs in your air, with your legs in the air, if not more valuable because you're able to rest into it more. There's no kicking going on. So it's a really great version of shoulder stand. And if you can get your ego out of the way and realize the value of 
um, assisted postures with with um, props. I think it's really they're really fantastic. You can do their work on your body if you can just be in them, rather than doing postures. You know, you can just unwind and allow them to happen for your body. Okay, so we need to move on. We are going to bend your knees and carefully come off your props and we're going to build another prop for yourself. So you can put your bolster off to your side. You're going to need your blankets and one block and your chair now. So you place your chair on your mat so that it sticks and it doesn't um, slip on you. you. Place your blanket over your chair so that it's soft on the edge and you'll need a, a block to kneel on. You could use a, a bolster here too if you have a smaller one than me. And you're gonna sit on your block and then what you're going to do is and I'm actually going to build this up a little bit more because it's too low for me. So you can even build this up even more. You could use your bolster here too, yeah. It might be a little awkward. You're going to... rest back over your chair for a supported camel pose here. And then find a way to let this posture out of your body. And you can either stay with the supported version or you can try um, coming up into camo without the chair. You could still use the chair. You can use a block. So remember, this is about releasing the ego and being with what your body needs today. So you can inhale, reach your right arm up and over to the block. <laughs> and I've got, <laughs> I've got my block on the chair. I think I'm gonna eat what I'm gonna do today. What feels right for me is to use my blocks on either side of my feet. That's what I'm gonna do. So inhale, reach up and over, block, up and over, block. <laughs> hmm. You know, that doesn't even feel good. I'm going to do half camel. This pose is not my favorite pose. I'm going to do it on the other side. Inhale, reach your left arm up and over. Right arm to follow. I'm going to release my ego's need for it to be perfect. And counter pose, just, um, we're going to come right into our seated twist for that. I'm going to say maybe if it wasn't minus 27 Celsius here today, my body might be a little bit more willing to do a back bend. <laughs> okay, we're going to just uh, bend your right leg in front of your left leg and take your left hand to the outside of your 
right leg. Yeah, that is with the wind chill, yeah. Oh, it was only minus 20. Okay, so much better. Switch your legs so that your left leg is in front and twist to the other side. You can always fill space with your blanket here. And then we're going to finish with a seated forward fold. And I'm going to show you how to use your props for that as well. For me, seated forward folds are very challenging. And i got to let go of the ego's need to touch my toes on these too. So you can use your chair and your bolster for these and your blanket. So you can take your, your bolster underneath your knees. You can sit up on your blanket to elevate your hips, lift in, tip your um, sit bones, tip your pelvis, roll your pelvis over your leg bones, and then you can rest forward on your chair. And then slowly make your way up to seated, put your props off to the side and lie down on your back for Shavasana. Taking a deep breath in through your nose. Let it fall out of your mouth. And allow yourself to rest back to receive the teachings and your practice to integrate your practice. Reflect back on this practice on Hanuman the musician teaching us to release our ego. And notice what stands out. What's the life connection? Reflect how you're going to take what you learn from your practice today off your mat and into the world. Then gradually allow your breath to deepen, wiggle and stretch out, and slowly 
Bend your knees, roll to your right side, and make your way up to seated. Thank you for joining me for episode 220 of Namaste Yoga. Please leave your comments below and let me know what you learned from this class, and I look forward to hearing from you. Namaste. Melissa would love to hear your questions and thoughts. Please leave your comments below the video. Thank you for your reviews on iTunes and YouTube. Your reviews help us to share yoga and a yoga lifestyle with others around the world. If you have a question for Melissa, you can leave a voice message at melissawest.com, and Melissa may answer it in an upcoming blog.